video we look at more shapes and parameters in code.org's game lab environment. We're going to learn a little bit more JavaScript and I'm going to do a little walkthrough of some of the important bubbles in lesson four of the Computer Science Discoveries game lab curriculum here. This isn't just a plain walkthrough though. I'm going to give you some tips that you will not find in the instructions or the videos of code.org, things that are going to make you like typing a lot better, some tips and tricks, and um, you know also some things about how to think when you're coding. Okay, So to begin, let's take a look at Lesson 4, Bubble 2, and right away we're being given some new parameters. In the previous Lesson 3, we had rectangles, but we only had two parameters in the rectangle, which is the X and the Y, and that would show us where it's going to end up. Well, in this one now, we have four parameters, and they're asking right away to look at the code and try and figure out how the last two inputs in rectangle work. I just want to remind you quickly that, uh, you know, try these lessons on your own. Pause this video if you haven't tried this yet. Spend five or ten minutes on it, and then start the video again because I've got a lot of spoilers in this video. I'm going to give away a lot of answers and I want you to think about it yourself before you go ahead and watch me talk about it. Okay? So again, pause the video at each step, try it yourself first, and then come back to me. So the key here on this one, you've started the video again, you've paused it, you've had a look at this, is to remind you that you have a toolbox in code.org's game lab environment and that toolbox shows you for each command what parameters it takes and sometimes just looking at the letters of the parameters the labels they give the parameters you can tell what they mean x and y that's the x and the y coordinates where the rectangle is going to go and w and h you may have guessed already are width and height so these two extra parameters allow us to control how wide and how high the rectangle is. If you don't know from the labels, move your mouse over to see examples and remember that each command has documentation. It will tell you lots and lots of stuff. You can even scroll down to the parameters section and it will tell you explicitly W is a number that controls the horizontal width in pixels of the rectangle. It's all there. Okay. So that's the key for this bubble. Uh, then knowing that you should be able to change the numbers in the second rectangle, the width or the height, to make the red rectangle longer than the blue one. The height is the up and down, so you're going to change this number to make that happen. Once you get to bubble six, pause this video, take a look through this and try it on your own. And then when you're done trying, start the video again. So now that you've had a chance to take a look at this challenge, you'll notice something new that we've got in our typed JavaScript. When you're using blocks, I taught you in a previous video that you can use these comment blocks to help you organize your code. They also have some nice white space in here too to separate chunks of code. Well, you can do that in typed JavaScript as well. And all you do is type two forward slashes and then whatever you type in there gets ignored by the JavaScript interpreter so that you can type whatever you want and those are nice notes to yourself. Um, use comments. They're super helpful. When you get into bigger programming projects, your code could end up being, you know, a hundred or more lines long. I've seen students make things that are a thousand lines long. You better have some comments and some white space in there organizing your code so that you can get through it when you need to debug it. Lesson 4, Bubble 9. Try all of these. Such, such, such good challenges. Uh, a couple of these might take you a while, but it's so worth it. Okay, The hard way is the easy way. When you start to make your own game, you're going to need to draw amazing things in your game. You need to put graphics in your game, right? And in order to learn to do that, uh, these are great, great practice challenges. I want to take a quick look specifically at letter D. This one talks about the arc command. 
This is something that gives students a lot of trouble. Um, so read the code and see how the arc block works. Pay close attention to the last two parameters. Those are the ones that are tough. Play around with the arc block once you think you know how it works. Well, I'm going to change what they're saying there. We've got this arc here. We're going to play around with it so that we can learn how it works by playing. Okay. So let's look at arc. It takes six different parameters. X and Y must be somewhere about where the arc is. So I'm just going to run this and see what we get. And I'm going to play with this first one. Let's change the X from 50 to 150. Okay, and that is the X position, it looks like. I'm guessing that if I move the Y down, then it goes downward. If I go to 300, it'll go down even further. In case you hadn't noticed, the Y axis in programming is not the same as in algebra class. Zero is up at the top, and then the higher you go on the Y, the further down it goes. So the Y axis is upside down in programming. That is the way it is in just about every programming language, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we know what X and Y do. W and H must be width and height again. So I'm looking at this arc, which happens to look just like a circle or an ellipse. But let's play with width and height. Let's make it wider. Not surprising there. It made it wider. Let's try the next one, the second arc right here. What if I change the width on that? What does it do? Okay, same sort of game. Makes it wider. I think I understand that. And now come the hard ones. Start and stop. What does that mean? All three, well, the first two of these arcs start at zero. I'm going to work with the second one here. Let's change this to 10. And we're watching right here to see how this changes. Interesting. That changed the bottom line. Let's move this up to 30. Let's keep increasing it. I'm going to continue increasing it, and hopefully you see start is an angle. Okay. When I put it to 90, it's now 90 degrees from where it was before. If I go 180, it's going to be 180 degrees from where it was before. I need to remind myself what's zero on that angle. Well, zero is to the right. Now that kind of makes sense about this green one. The green one starts at 90. Well, 90 degrees is down, so this must be the start. And then the, the stop, that's the angle where it stops. So I, I think what's happening here in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this arc makes a curve. It's like a portion of an ellipse, a portion of a circle. Where does it start? Where does it stop? These first three are filled in with some sort of color, but then after line five, we've got two more where they're not filled, so you don't have to completely fill them. Now we have a command that'll let us make curved lines. That's the first one that we have encountered. So lesson 9D, super important. One last thing I want to show you. On the make a shape scene, here's what I made had a little fun with it. Here's my code. You can see I organized my code quite nicely. You can tell what each chunk of code does. You should too. Something I want to show you, like the mouth might look kind of complicated. I'm going to go ahead and redo this from scratch just to discuss how do I get all these numbers, right? There's so many parameters. So mouth. It's going to be pink on the inside, so we're going to fill it with pink. Quick side note on a bug here. If you don't put the quotes in there and you just say pink, then JavaScript thinks pink is the name of a variable. But I don't want the variable labeled pink. I want the string pink. Okay, totally different. Then we'll make an ellipse. Now, ellipses have an X and a Y coordinate for the center. Move your mouse over where you want it to be. Okay, 200, 300 roughly. Right down here under show grid. 
that's going to give you the coordinates where your mouse is. That's my secret to making these drawings look good. Width? Well, uh, width is from 200. I need to go maybe about 150 to the right and 150 to the left. So that's a total of 300 on the width. I'm going to try 100 height. That looks pretty good. Could stop right there if I wanted, but I want to get those teeth in there. Teeth is going to be a bunch of lines. Now lines, you have to give the x and the y of the starting and the x and the y of the ending. So if I want my line to start right here where my mouse is, that's 73, 278. And I want it to end down here about 89, 336. Run. Also notice a technique I always use. Every time I add a new shape, I rerun it to make sure that piece worked right. You don't want to write, you know, 20 lines of code and then run it and find out something's wrong because then you got to dig for what the problem was. Now this next line, I want to start where the last one ended. So 89, 336. I'll have this one go up to 116, 262. And you can see pretty quickly that I'm adding the lines for the teeth. That's how I did that, okay? I used that technique for every shape on this image. You should too. Super handy. That's all I got for now.